Hello YouTube friends, welcome back to The Last Homely Garden. Here you're seeing the garden in July with all the growth that's happening. The vegetables are growing, the flowers are growing. It's absolutely amazing. This video is a project that I've been wanting to do for a long time. And so I hope you enjoy watching my wonderful brick oven come into being. Okay, something exciting happening to this corner of the pavilion. So I used to have, well I do have this big beast of a thing here, but it's too big. And so I've asked my friend if he will build me. What are you building, Anth? A brick barbecue fire. Yeah, that's exactly what he's doing. Yeah. And so this morning he's dug out the place where it's going to go. And in a minute we're going to plug in the cement mixer. Is yep, that right? that's right. We'll mix some concrete, put yep. the pad in, let that go off, and then we're going to start building. Well, this is very exciting. <laughs> so watch this space, guys. I wonder if you remember when I first met you, you were 15 years old. That's right. And you were living next door to me with your two brothers and your mum and dad. That's right. In the cottage next door to mine. Yeah, yeah, that's right. A cheeky little red-haired boy. That's right. And now look at him. <laughs> Not much red hair left. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Moved away and came back. That's right. And uh, back home. And now Anth just lives a short walk from my house. So, so perfect person to choose for this job. <laughs> yes, I know it's uh, it's gone past in a flash, hasn't it? It's gone past. I in was a trying flash. to work it out just now how how old you must have been. So you're the middle, aren't you? Yeah. And what yeah. would um, Nigel have been then? Well, Nigel's a year younger, yeah. and Tim's a year older. Okay. So stuck in the middle, I was. Okay. Um, so uh, fourteen, so yeah. fifteen, and sixteen. Goodness me. Martha and John and, and, and Owen. Owen we're tiny tots. Well, Owen was born here. Yeah, yeah. And John too, uh, when you lived here. Yeah, yeah. So, so we do go that. back a long way. I can remember that clear as day. Yeah, yeah. We go back a long way. Anyway, so. I'm stopping progress. It's all right. So. <laughs> nice to help. Here. He's going to help this next bit <laughs> because um, it's about ooh, four days, I guess. So that's going to see. Right, that's it. Ah. <laughs> Woohoo! Happy days. <laughs> Happy days. Yes! <laughs> yes! <laughs> Happy days! Happy days! <laughs> it's 
brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant. It's stayed up. <laughs> <laughs> Champion. That's excellent. Are you going to come and cook on it? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Definitely. This is a few days later now and I was digging some potatoes. My garden team were here and Adam and Aaron were helping me. And this is a variety called Charlotte. It's a really, really lovely potato. It's a good all-rounder. In fact, if I only had to grow one potato, it would be Charlotte. And the potatoes have done very well this year, unlike some other vegetables. So I took the bucket that I'd just dug to the polytunnel and laid them out on the floor and then we covered them over with um, a cover to stop the light getting to them and that was just to let them dry out for a few days before we put them in bags. This next variety is called pink fir apple. It's a really lovely salad potato and this one's done really well as well. just a lovely long tuber, pink. Delicious. And this basket's really useful for getting rid of the excess soil. So they were in the poly to dry out for a few days. And then the beetroot, that's about as big as the beetroot's got. I haven't got massive beetroot this year. And so that's okay though. It's been strange weather. So I'm going to prepare the beetroot and the potatoes, which usually take quite a long time to cook. Oh, but these leaves from the tops of the beetroot, I'll eat those later. I'll use some of the good ones and eat those. So I'm just cutting the beetroot into approximately the same size pieces. So there were some small ones and then the halved the bigger ones. And those are bits of thyme from the garden. And then I put um, a quarter of a lemon in, in, in pieces, either side of the beetroot. So the thyme and the lemon would be very nice together. And then the whole thing gets um, a little bit of olive oil. And some salt. Oh, and a few chilli flakes as well. I like my food quite spicy, not too spicy. So this method then, uh, we wrap up the vegetables in a little parcel like this and crimp the edges up and we'll put that onto the fire in a minute. But first I do the same thing with the potatoes. I just cut them in half just to give them a shorter cooking time and some salt and pepper. And with these, I thought it would be nice with some of the mint that's growing by my back door. And also some uh, more, some olive oil. And then I popped a few garlic cloves in between the potatoes there. And that's the second parcel to go on the coals. Make a nice cup of tea and then 
I went round the garden to fill up my weed pot, which is this strange creation I made at pottery a few years ago. I like to go round the garden and pick whatever's in flower and make a little decoration for the table outside. And down in the polytunnel, growth's been amazing. I've been very diligent about watering. So the lettuce and the flat leaf parsley, I was picking that for my meal. And the cucumbers have done incredibly well. And even the tomatoes, which I'm, I'm famous for not being able to grow tomatoes very well, and some basil. So I picked some of those to add into this feast. Now these are the last of my broad beans and they're a little bit big and so consequently a little bit tough but I picked all that there were left and they'll go into what I'm going to make now which is a stir fry. Get the onions chopped up and then some olive oil in the pan ready for uh, this little stir fry I'm gonna make. So first of all, I grated in some garlic and then some ginger. And a few of my chili flakes, which I like a lot. And the fire's fantastic underneath there. In goes the onion. And then I'm just gonna add the beans in there because uh, they might take quite a while to cook through. I did slice one of the tomatoes into there. And these packets were doing really well on the fire. Well, it's a little bit windy. I hope you can hear this okay without too much wind noise. I'm smoking away at the back there. Oh, hello. Hello. <laughs> um, I've just tasted the stuff that I'm frying there, which is um, uh, broad beans, um, a couple of courgettes. Uh, shame to probably put a tomato in there they'd be nicer eaten raw but i wanted to make a bit of a sauce some onions and garlic and some uh, aromatics in there so ginger and salt and pepper and at the very last minute i'm going to put the leaves in so kale uh, some of the beetroot tops um, some spinach not spinach uh, leaf beet all chopped up and at last minute I'm going to put those through with some soy sauce and fry all those off and I've been testing the potatoes and the beetroot and the potatoes are definitely ready now the beetroot are a little bit harder but the beetroot always do take a longer time and so I'm going to serve up in a minute and see um, what this outdoor cooked meal from my garden is like so I've got some uh, salad leaves, some lettuce and the other tomato that I picked, uh, some flat leaf parsley, which I'll chop up and put over the top of everything. Um, what else did I pick? Well, I've got all sorts of bits and pieces of herbs in the, in the um, tinfoil parcels. So uh, we'll see what the flavors are all like when they all come together. So if this works, this has been, um, I'm not going to say this is my first attempt because this is my second attempt at cooking on my outdoor uh, cooker because the first attempt ended in complete disaster where there was just smoke everywhere. This time I've used a bit of charcoal, uh, which is um, charcoal burns hotter and also a little bit smoke free. The wood is very smoky and I think the whole thing's gonna taste quite smoky. But uh, I'm going to uh, plate up in a minute <laughs> 
<laughs> and see what it all tastes like. I'm really pleased with my outdoor uh, brick cooker. I want to use it every chance I get in the summer. Um, it's August now. I started filming uh, the first part of this video when Anthony made the brick oven back in July. Uh, and then since then I've been to the Festival of Quilts, I've come back and it's rained torrentially. Every time I've wanted to come out it's rained. And today, even today it's a little bit too windy, but it's lovely and warm. So I'm going to shut up now and I'm going to plate up and see what this tastes like. Let's try the beetroot. Just they're cooked perfectly. You just scrape the skins off. Although you could eat the skins, there's no worry about eating the skins. All organic, all homegrown. Mmm. They've got a real smokiness to them. Mm. There are so many tastes coming through. So there's the garlic and the lemon. What did I put the lemon in? In the beetroot. And the mint coming through in the potatoes. And then I only put a little bit of ginger in with the uh, stir-fried vegetables, but it's definitely coming through. And then I think the trick was to just put a small amount of all the aromatics, a tiny bit of soy sauce, a little bit of chili, because it's not none of them are overwhelming. And there's the herbs are in there, giving this whole mixture of tastes and flavours. And so I think that the proper second attempt at using my brick oven has been a roaring success. So now that I've done a successful trial run on me, I can invite the family around now and make things for them. Bon appetit.